So let's pick up on page 166 of our packets with math. And to start off with math, I want to do, uh, give two quick, uh, two quick math problems. So for how? Let's say I give you five dollars to go to the store, uh, to go to the candy store. I want you to buy me four pieces of candy at fifty cents each. How much change are you going to give me back? Um, about three dollars. Three dollars is right. All right, Alyssa. Similar question, but slightly different. I am going to give you d dollars to go, uh, to, uh, to go to the candy store to buy me. P pieces of candy for C cents a piece. How much um, change are you bringing me back? I'm not too sure. That's fair, and you'll notice that your problem is a lot harder than for Hans, right? Yeah. And what would make that problem a little bit easier? Um, what would change, what's the big difference between the problem I gave you for Hannah and Alyssa? No numbers and yeah. just letters. What does C or P or D represent in that problem? We don't know. Except sometimes we do, because if we take a look at question number 51, notice that it says x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 is equivalent to blank. Now what do we notice about all the answers? They all have x. Yeah, all of the questions on page one, on question number 51 all have x in their answers as well, which means we don't actually have to solve for x. Instead, we can plug in any number that we want. Now you can see our basic approach to plug, plugging in on the middle of page 166 there, and that gives you some of our good guidelines. Um, what we want to do is we want to pick a number for our variable, and we want to plug it in. So let's take a look at question number 51, and what number do we like for, uh, what number do we, uh, can we plug in for x in this particular equation? Four. Four? Uh, that might be a little bit bigger. Is there any other number that might be a little bit simpler? Two. Two. I like two. So let's work this problem imagining that everywhere we see an x, we put in a two. So this would then be two cubed plus two, parentheses there, two cubed minus nine times two minus 18. Now I'm going to let you all work through that problem and take a moment to do calculations and figure out what all of this would equal. So if we follow through this, what would that equal then? Negative 20? Negative 20 is correct. So let's put negative 20 right here. And I'm even going to put it in a little bit of a box for us. Because this is going to be our target number. When we plug in 2 for x and any of the answer choices, it should also equal to negative 20. So let's work through it. Answer choice A. x plus 2 times x minus 18. What's that going to equal? Let me have a moment to work through that. So for Hannah, do you have the answer for this one? Is it going to be negative 64? It will be negative 64. That's not negative 20, is it? I like that it's got a negative sign, but otherwise it's wrong, so let's cross that out. Alyssa, what is, uh, if we plug in 2 for answer choice B, x minus 3 cubed plus f times x plus 2, what are we going to get? Negative 4. Negative 4. That's smaller than negative 60, but is that what we're looking for? No. Nope, so we can cross that out. Farhana, what about answer choice C? x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. Ooh, negative 25. We're getting there, but not quite. So again, we can cross this answer out. Alyssa, can you do answer choice D for me then? Um, zero. Zero, yeah. We notice that x, mi x minus 2 right there, and after we multiply everything through, that's going to be a zero. Now, just using our, our power, our process elimination, it looks like he's going to be our best choice. But for Hannah, can you calculate that for me? So x plus 2 is going to be? Um, 4. Yeah. And then x plus 3? 5. 5. And then what's x minus 3 going to be? Negative 1. Negative 1. So if we take all three of those together, we get negative 20. And that's going to be our answer choice, the correct answer choice for this question. Good work. 
Now, the nice thing about plugging in is that when we see variables both in our question and in our answers, we can uh, then put in, substitute any number that we like. And there are a couple of finer, uh, fine to, uh, finer ways of figuring out what number we want to plug in. But we can deal with those with other problems. Instead, I want to turn our packets to page 168, where we can look at another strategy we can apply to algebra, uh, complicated algebra questions, plugging in the ANSYS or PETA. With PETA, what we want to do is we want to look at a problem, and when we do, we can recognize an equation built into it. Then we also notice that the answer choices go into, uh, go into that equation and everything balances out. So if we read uh, question number 28, a prize totaling $4,200 is to be divided among the first four racers to cross the finish line in a motorcycle race. If there are no ties at each of the first four racers uh, is to, uh, finishes to receive 300 less than the racer who finishes in the position number one higher. How much money does the racer in fourth place receive? So first off, What's our equation? Does anyone notice that? Um, that means everybody, everybody's price went in at the equal $4,200. Absolutely. And so we can start with our fourth place uh, winner. How much does our fourth place winner get? 300 less than the third place winner. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, but that's okay because if we look, it's actually the answer choices themselves. If any one of those answer choices is the correct number for fourth place, like you said, we can add 300 to that for third place. So what we can do is, on our scratch paper, set it up just like this. Fourth place for the answer choice. Third place will be our answer choice plus 300. Second place, and then first place. And when we add all those up, like you said, for Honda should equal $4,200. Now, do we notice anything going on with these answer choices, the way that they're presented to us? If you look down at the numbers, what do you notice? A pattern of any kind? Oh, they all increase. Yeah, they're in sequential order from smallest to largest. And this actually will make choosing which answer, uh, which, uh, which answer choice to start with a little bit easier. Because if we start with the middle, and we notice that this is too high, we can just eliminate answer choices J and K as well. And if this is too small, we can also eliminate answer choices F and G. So if we start with um, H at $900, then Alyssa, how much, how much amount of money is third place going to make? Uh, $900. Uh, no, that's for fourth place. So oh, third okay. place will get $300 more or? Uh, $1,200. $1,200, good. Yeah. And one more time, what about second place then, Alyssa? Mm, $15. 15 good. And then first place? Very good. Now, if we add all three of those, all four of those numbers up, it's going to actually be $5,400. Too much. So if it's too much, which answer choice is where I want to eliminate that? J and K. J and K. So let's look. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, H is going to be there, but thank you for reminding me to cross it out. And instead, let's pick a different uh, letter. So which one do we want to do then for Hana F or G? Um, I think G would be a lot closer. Yeah. Well, let's find out by, pl uh, by plugging in the answer. So fourth place is going to be not, um, is going to be six hundred. So what's third place going to be? Nine hundred. Nine hundred. And then second place? Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. And then finally? Fifteen. Fifteen hundred. And if you'll notice, six hundred plus nine hundred is fifteen hundred. Plus fifteen hundred is going to be three thousand. And then with our extra 12, we will get $4,200. And that is the number we're looking for that, to balance out this equation. And that makes G our best answer choice. All right, good work, y'all. And we'll now continue on with reading. All right, stop. Cool beans. Yeah.